Hi everyone, it's Roxanne Greenwich. I'm a legal assistant, marketing, careers, project manager for Higher Merrick's Administrative Services, and we have for the past three years successfully demonstrated an administrative solution tool for measuring individual accountability, which serves to innovate U.S. economy, education, judicial accountability, prison, and public safety reform, or public integrity reform. I've been getting a lot of comments um, on Facebook from uh, victims of a uh, federal, uh, federal crime victim witness is someone who is created by several acts of official corruption, fraud, and civil rights violations, which turn out to cause legal malpractice of our state courts. Someone early on usually in a petition process or a dependency matter or the custody of a person, civil or criminal, uh, there's a, a terrible ep epidemic of it occurring in our domestic relations matters, but it's also criminal wrongful convictions and unlawful imprisonments as well, commits perjury. Sometimes it's the people involved in the domestic relations dispute that one tells uh, lie about the others, but what is most damaging and causing irreparable harm to our community to missing to cause missing career contributions to economy is the perjury done by an authorized state employee, someone who is trusted to dispense uh, federal funded Children's Protective Services or Department of Corrections funding. And so they tell the, the individual employee is actually in violation of the own of their own employers' policies, guidelines, and what they're supposed to be doing to preserve families in the case of Children's Protective Services or in the case to actually apply criminal justice and criminal matters for wrongful conviction. And if you use our administrative solutions tool, which is nothing more than the citizens, the lay person controlling a public docket where everyone has the benefit of verified posted public incident reports, facts, evidence, and witness testimony, including expert witness reports, you can actually measure who dropped the ball, who was willful, who was malicious, who was simply incompetent and in need of training and wasn't aware of what they were supposed to be doing. And you can retrieve those children of all ages, the young children, disabled children, aging children that are literally kidnapped for profit, being that they're out of control of uh, the manageability of what happens to their heritage, health, career contribution, to the U.S. economy, their freedom and their future, away from their families and natural loved ones, and into the hands of billing contractors. Um, DHS has tens of thousands of Department of Human Services, that's the state agency that's entrusted for dispensing Children Protective Services, so, right? So we have spent the last year sending a clear message that Roxanne Greenwich, is a legal assistant, marketing careers project manager. We are not, I am not, Higher Lyrics is not, Roxanne Greenwich is not an advocate. I, an advocate is someone who speaks for someone else. I am not a lawyer. I do not practice law. We do not represent anyone in any claims process. I am not a protester and I'm not an activist. I am a traditional legal secretary and a damn good one. Okay, so what I do is the same thing as a legal assistant, marketing careers project manager. I have to be hired. I have to be retained. Now, traditionally, law firms would hire legal secretaries and pay us a salary. So what I have come up with is a contract, a retainer agreement that is made, is customized to accommodate a, a already financially devastated population of American working class student and impoverished victims of official corruption, fraud, and civil rights violations. By the time a person starts looking around for help 
away from, uh, after having been financially devastated, they are sizing every, sizing all the services available up according to what they know traditionally exists. So if we can come out of the box of saying the only person who can help me is a bar association attorney, then we'll be able to see the other legal support services that are available to us, which now with today's internet technologies go hand in hand with marketing. Okay, we must not only have court compliant filings, a legal assistant can produce and we do produce document production. But we just don't pull it out of the air and say, oh, I like the way this document sounds. Let's follow us in the court. We go to the official court website and we find out what forms that court, that jurisdiction, those authorities, the judicial authorities there, have made available for a person to take action on their own behalf in accordance with most states' uh, constitutions reflect the U.S. Constitution and have a clause that says all petitioners may uh, petition court for redress or grievances. It does not say you had to go to uh, law school. Now let me make this very clear. A legal assistant, even though you hire a legal assistant, if it were me or anyone else, a paralegal, if you were to hire them professionally, they are a professional service. They get paid. They have costs. They have overhead. Just like a law firm has overhead. They have to keep the lights on. They have to keep a roof over their heads or wherever they're doing the research from. And they have to keep communications open. So there are costs involved in toner cartridges. So I have devised this customized retainer agreement that benefits, builds on all the benefits of being able to retain a professional, qualified, credentialed professional service who would never be affordable if you paid them the market rate, what a legal secretary is compensated, when you would never be able to afford to pay her $800 a week or $1,000 a week for full access. I have devised 90 calendar days, full access, that's three months, normal business hours from Monday through Friday, total access to a legal assistant. And the legal assistant must take certain steps. She must verify your claims. So you have to have a claims intake interview. You have to be able to resonate with your secretary and provide the documentation. She can't make it up and she can't say, well, somebody told me this, so I'm going to repeat it. So, okay? So there's some forms that I'm going to, uh, oh, I'm going to show you guys the subpoena form. Here in Philadelphia Family Court, I'm getting a, a disproportionate amount of complaints for unlawful imprisonment where the, the judges here in Philadelphia Family Court are locking up more and more parents trying to protect their children. It's disproportional. The claims are coming in at such a high rate. Uh, yes, some judges stand, uh, um, uh, stand out more than others, but the fact that this rate is occurring in Philadelphia because city of, uh, after city of Philadelphia DHS workers commit some type of perjury, they lie and they actually say things about the parent that are not true and then petition the court to arrest them. So what we have in addition to trying to be litigants in our courts is uh, the challenge, the stress of never knowing if we're going to walk in and be arrested in our courts just before showing up in our courts, right? Because the courts are losing sight. Philadelphia Court of Common Pleas has lost sight that City of Philadelphia Department of Human Services, Children Protective Services, are only a litigant. That's all they are. They're someone that petitioned to come before the court and ask for the authority to transport someone's, to transfer someone's custody, to transport someone's person. So if the federal crime victim, the victim of City of Philadelphia perjury and DHS can begin to see that DHS is not the authority and stop falling for this entering into contracts and how can I satisfy a family service plan with you and instead of complaining about you and getting the truth to the, to the judicial authority, we'll never know if our judges are actually fair. Because the judges at this point in Philadelphia Family Court are only hearing 
one side, one litigant side, the adverse party that's actually suing for dependency to take children away to fast track them for sale to DHS contractors and pharmaceutical providers and physicians are contractors that are giving our children all these psychotropic chemicals and causing these injuries. I am a professional service. I'm credentialed and I'm responsible about what I do. Okay? So it's not for you to just tell me what your claims are and then don't follow through. Me, this retainer agreement requires a one-third deposit with the signed retainer agreement following uh, five, no later than five days later, notarized sign. The client data information that you have has been cut, that you have to give is customized so that it is the bare minimum, so that you are not disclosing over the internet and transmission of forms your personal identification information. But you have to be forthcoming with your case history and your paperwork later. The subpoena forms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There are non-friendly subpoena forms, and there are friendly subpoena forms. Notice the non-friendly subpoena forms are red, <laughs> and the blue subpoena forms are the friendly subpoena forms. And these are the uh, forms that when certified by the clerk of court, here's an, our clerk of court here in Philadelphia, Mark A. Oliva, when he stamps these, when the clerk of court stamps them, they're certified. And they are available in form of par Paris. The advantage that City of Philadelphia DHS has over the litigant, the non-attorney represented litigant, or the conflict of interest attorney litigant. Many uh, litigants are actually verbally abused, suffer belligerence, non-responsiveness, insufficient counsel from court-appointed counsel. That's conflict of interest many times for court-appointed counsel. One. The court appointed counsel here in Philadelphia, they're working on an attorney wheel, an attorney appointment wheel, where they only get $300, not just to defend the parent that DHS is coming after, but also to be a child advocate, a guardian ad litem. And they rarely, what we're seeing in our data now of well over 2,060 claimants is standard modus operandi is to neglect the case. Uh, it, it's financially driven. They're under the gun, they're under a lot of hardship and stress to try to pay their bills, their costs of overhead, and they actually neglect the um, person that they were assigned to do. So there are steps that you can take to notify the court. What we're doing is we're saying, wait a minute, let's have faith in our courts. Let's have faith that maybe all judges are not corrupt. They're not. Many judges and law enforcement officials have taken their oaths to uphold public safety seriously. And they've taken their oaths to uphold the Constitution seriously. But how do we circumvent a belligerent conflict of interest counsel and perjurious DHS employees that are lying and sending us into the child abuse registry fraud, sending reports about our family to child abuse registry fraud, when this is all the judge ever knows about? We can write a letter to the judge. If you go to phila.gov or your city or state's official website, you will see official contact information for these officials. They are officials. They are public servants. Supposed to be public servants. What you doing, Gracie? Okay. So we have learned that we can subpoena the records and things. We can subpoena the records and things from this agency who's suing us, our adverse party, a litigant in our dispute. And then we can take it and send it by citizen's layperson referral. The records, of course, go into the state filing that we get produced from DHS to let the judge know, let them know in correspondence it is on the way. We are taking steps to guard our, pro our due process rights. These have been the deficiencies in due process. And now, we would like you to consider all of the evidence in the best interest of our domestic relations matters, not just in the best interest of City of Philadelphia Department of Human Services billing contractors. And then we take, we can use different tools, petitions, or just uh, press releases with transmission on data disks our data, confirmed, verified claims intake data, similarly situated in mass, where instead of one claimant 
uh, going in all the claims and all the letters that we wrote to the judges going and all the um, reports of uh, verified public incident reports of wrongful conviction or deficiencies in due process or legal malpractice, legal malpractice of what? A state statute having to do with identity theft, having to do with uh, theft of person, having to do with uh, the federal statute CAPTA, child abuse prevention treatment, having to do with denials of whether or not you got a UCCJEA hearing, whether or not your child was just transported because of UCCJEA in another state and still held here by DHS in foster care, being injured, denied to both parents. Okay, well, this little guy right here, Grayson, he is a little guy that was saved by the public notice and warning being built into hospital directive, right? I keep telling everybody, um, Jesse Jennifer uh, Roy in Wisconsin showed us about the uh, public forum, legal notice and warning violation of rights under color of law, where we cite the U.S. statutes, okay? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. Now, he, when he was a newborn, because his his brother and sister, Lorraine Greenwich's children, his mother, my daughter, were are, are irreparably injured because of the legal malpractice of Judge Robert J. Matthews, who we petitioned to have removed, and we were able to identify 144 signatures of people whose families were um, damaged by him. So this hospital directive, like there's an opportunity when a mother goes, once a mother's been involved with DHS, DHS comes after everything in her womb. A father as well, all right? If they know about a father, a father's about to have a child, he may have remarried, they'll come after that child too. And they'll use as the premise for that the unproven charges that they were able to terminate involuntarily terminate rights before. So they say, okay, on the record, you guys are unfit parents, so we're going to take this child, and they'll kidnap them in the hospital. We found what works to restrain Department of Human Services with the help of the police, with the knowledge of the local police that they will not assist is if you can build into what's required, the only administrative step that I'm aware of, the opportunity, is the hospital prime directive. When you're going in for surgery to deliver your child, you have to get it on record who what your living will is, your medical guardian appointment, your appointment medical guardian, and who your parental guardians are if you don't come through the surgery delivery, okay? Who should your child go home with? You this only works if you do it with a prior federal lawsuit file. You have to have something to refer to, say, here's where all the evidence is of their prior screwing up my case. Here, my records management. That's legal malpractice. They already committed legal malpractice to cause personal injury to my family. So now they have to be restrained. They, the state agency, no state agency employee may approach this mother in her hospital room, may transport that child from the hospital anywhere. This child is to leave that hospital with either the mother, the father, this grandparent, this aunt, this uncle who we have designated, and it is addressed to the hospital risk management whose objectives are to make sure that hospital does not get sued. You know, notify them of their personal injury liability. This noted legal notice and warning under color law notifies the hospital of their um, liability for personal injury. Okay. All right. If uh, okay. oh, and the other thing we um yeah the uh, legal notice and warning to the hospital about personal injury liability should they allow any state agency employee to force services on that mother, batter that mother in the room, may, uh, bring up any uh, false allegations, and you have to have that federal lawsuit, not about civil rights. Personal injury is the nature of the lawsuit. The cause of action is perjury, all right? When indicated, the cause of action is racketeering, RICO, racketeering influence corrupt organization. All right, those what our federal lawsuits are. Then the Department of Justice claim for damages form, 
uh, for personal injuries, disability, and wrongful death caused by an employee of a federal agency. That's not a court lawsuit. That's a damages claim form available through the Department of Service. Google it. It's Department of Justice Claim Form 95. It is no filing fee. It has a different set of instructions. It is something you have to resonate and follow through with. Okay? So, I'm happy to help anyone, but you're going to have to now, from here on out, you're going to have to indicate your willingness to work with me in a competitive process. I can't think of anything more competitive than child rescue children of all ages, wrongfully convicted, unlawfully incarcerated, suffering, disabled, and our careers contributions missing, which would have otherwise enriched our U.S. economy, feeding, human trafficking, homelessness, runaway, cutting ourselves, and alcoholism, addiction, and other destructive behaviors, all right? Um, so, go to www.hirelyrics.org, use the pay now button there to prepay one-third of 90 days retainer fee, uh, which is $1,500 for full 90-day support. Uh, we, we don't just file something for you. I really don't, we don't file anything for you. We don't practice law without a license. What we do is we prepare documents for your signature. Many times your notarized signature, always on a court-compliant form, always uh, after having researched the latest local rules, amendments, and chambers practices and preferences of that particular court, all right? And um, should you decide to use it and, and file it on your own behalf, or we're not mutually exclusive to an attorney either. We're a legal secretary, so our work actually helps the attorney who may be working with you as well. You don't have to be non-attorney represented. I know the costs that, uh, that attorneys struggle with for overhead and paying staff and research. You can have a trial prep binder, you can have your case history verification, exhibits index, everything all drawn up as documents, and that makes you a savvy shopper of attorneys. It's a building block for you to build on future filings, future venues, crime victim compensation, and it's a record of the truth of your case. So when your family does find its way home, find its way back to you, and you're controlling the keyword tags on that internet, uh, the... Uh, uh, sponsorship, independent dollars, publishing capabilities of the internet, then you will, <clears throat> you will be able to heal sooner than later. You and your family will be able to recover heritage, health, education, freedom, and careers. God bless everyone. This is Roxanne Greenwich. I'm Ezekiel Brown and Ariel Brown's grandmother who were mob assault Parent Kidnap Abducted, June 8, 2010, by Eric L. Brown and Sandra O. Sullivan Brown Kearney in a public mob assault. All right, God bless everyone.